Uh, first of all, I, I think before I start, really a big, big thank you. Uh, I think uh, having such, you know, having uh, ex-South Africans making Aliyah and being in this country is just amazing. And we always appreciate, you know, the concern that everyone has for us there, the ones that haven't made Aliyah yet. And we, we, it's just, uh, it's wonderful to see there's such an interest um, in our community, which is strong, is, vir- is strong and vibrant, but with a lot of challenges. I'm going to discuss mainly on the topic of really the Southern government in Israel. I think that's really the, 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 the topic that people are always most fascinated about. Um, we went through a massive change in South Africa politically with uh, Paul Party, which was a watershed in 2007, the end of 2007. I was actually out there for the full five days. When really, in reality, although it's still under the banner of the ANC, it was a total change of government. It was literally moving from Democrats to Republicans, Republicans to Democrats. There's literally, the purge is even greater because of such arch enemies. Um, dealing with the President Mbeki had his pros and cons. He was always very open to us and very good to us and would always you know, accept meetings with us. But he was very set in his ways. He knew what he believed in, he knew what was right. And I always tell people the relationship between Saudi and Israel was never going to get better, but it was never going to get worse. That was a certain level of cold peace. He had three particular people in his cabinet, Aziz Pahad, Esau Pahad, and Ronnie Castles, who were very, very vocally anti-Israel. But generally, it never moved forward, and a lot of pressure was put on him to make the relationship worse, and it never did. In the Zuma era, quite different. It's actually the exact opposite. President Zuma, he's very much a person who listens, and he takes people's advice, and he can be... <coughs> he can be um, he can change his decision, which on one hand makes it easier for us because there's more we can do in the form of explaining what's happening in Israel and that. But on the other hand, our enemies have also got his ear and we believe they could also have an influence on him. So we, we feel it's a, a lot more, uh, it's a lot more fluid than it used to be. And I think we, we, we've just seen it now with the recording of the ambassador for consultation, which I'll get on to. The, the two big things for me would currently President Zuma, if we got out of him, which is our little own South African Jewish Communities Balfour Declaration, we're on an ANC letterhead as the President of the ANC. He, he wrote committing that the party supports a two-state solution, supports his right to exist, believes in, you know, it was, it was a very big watershed uh, document which Mandela Mbeki had never given, um, or Tambo for that matter. And he actually did it. Our meeting with him was very frank. We had had a few unpleasant issues before. And from that meeting, I really realized that he gave us a commitment. And three weeks later, that, that document was faxed to our office, which showed me a few things. First of all, he's really the man in charge. Never kid yourself. He still makes the decisions. It wasn't an easy letter to give us. I promise you came under a lot of uh, pressure for it. And there was a certain level of efficiency three weeks later without asking. Them. So that for us was a very important letter. A lot of our enemies, I call them enemies, were very unhappy with their, that letter. Very, very unhappy. Where we sit in, and um, I'll just give you a few, a few just a few highlights and a few lowlights, if you want to call it. I mean, I think the, a very big issue is the LL issue, which I don't think we really everyone knows pretty much about it. A disgruntled employer went to the press. And um, what came out in that uh, almost stopped the flights going to South Africa. After a lot of work, I must say, we got involved in the space theoretically we shouldn't have. As private citizens of South Africa, it's really more an issue of two countries, and especially of two security organizations of the countries. But we were the ones who were going to lose the most. And in a sense, the people in this audience, I'm sure they have a lot of family members, who are also going to lose. A direct route was essential. One of the very first routes that I'll ever came, it's been going almost 60 years, was South Africa. And after a lot of hard work and a lot of backdoor, I mean, a, a compromise deal has been made. The route is secure, both countries are happy with it, and it's business as usual. So you can still get that incredible service with a big smile with the plane that Ben Gurion bought uh, when you come to South Africa. I'll tell you later if you do want to know really you are, but we got the worst plane here, last fleet has. And it's another whole story, but I've become quite, a, I'm quite an expert in aviation. And uh, that's for another day, but uh, it was very complex because there was the LL, there was the Israeli government, there was the Zarin government, there was the, 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 the Shin Bet. It was a very, very complicated deal. 
but I must say, Minister Yudelstein helped us a lot. He called the whole meeting together, which I flew into Israel uh, for a day to have that meeting. And eventually, uh, after a lot of um, discussion on that, a deal has been done. So that route's pretty much secure. Once again, our enemies really believe that this was something they could break. They tried very hard, they were very excited about it, and that they didn't succeed. Another thing which is coming across the world, of course, is the BDS, is the, you know, the disinvestment, boycotts and sanctions, which is becoming very, very um, widespread. We worked very hard with, actually, Berkeley University, which had the closest one. The first one had nearly happened about eight, ten weeks ago. And really, we were under massive stress in ourselves on another issue. And this is what we were doing at night. It was during the Goldstone Affair. Um, and we do Goldstone by day, and then old Lenny would phone me by night to help them in Berkeley. Um, of course, our very good friend, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, uh, he was leading the charge there and saying how important it was. And then we worked very hard to get statements out of the ANC and people who truly did liberate South Africa and did get incarcerated and, um, I mean, you did get imprisoned and did have to go into exile. Unlike Tutu, who had a fairly easy, unlike a lot of his... Um, fellow people who, went, who, who fought apartheid in those days. So we worked very hard on that, um, and that actually they, they they did get it. I mean, they didn't get the, the divestment through, it went to one vote, and that was stopped. No problem, it came to our shores a couple of weeks later. It's a famous story, we always get to your shores, where Stephen Friedman, a Jew himself, one of our real self-hating Jews, which seems to be quite a few in South Africa, um, try to lead the charge uh, to break the ties between the University of Johannesburg and Ben Gurion, which has been established only quite recently, and we think we've succeeded on that one as well. So we, we, we continuously having to put out the fires. Um, we believe so far we've done a fairly good job. Uh, I think people need to understand the base we're coming from. Uh, we can be very critical of government, and it's what I'll end off with, but um, we, we, the, the, the natural affiliation will always be the ANC and the PLO. Uh, they share a photocopy machine in the soccer together. The current Palestinian ambassador, who is very engaging with us, actually drove Oliver Tambo as his drive in the 60s in, um, in, in Dar es Salaam and the Sokka and those areas. So. Now, we'll always have the sympathy, and the ANC will always say, until the Palestinians and their state, until they liberated, their liberation struggle is not over. And that's the base you're starting with. So, you know, to, to, to think that you, 